All right, this is second grade, module seven, lesson 12. And in this lesson, students are gonna solve word problems involving um, making change in subtractions. Uh, and, uh, but although sometimes it's gonna be a, an addition problem with a missing add end. So the idea is we want students to be able to think about these problems. We want them to be able to represent the problems with a tape diagram and then decide on a proper strategy. Do I wanna subtract? Or do I want to think about this problem as an addition problem with a missing add end? It's up to the student. They just need to understand the problem first, right? So let's get started. So the directions say uh, for students to use the arrow method or the number bond or a tape diagram. I'm going to throw in also the standard algorithm, S-A, standard algorithm, which of course uh, students have at their disposal at this point because they learned it back in module five. So anyway, it says Kevin had a hundred cents. He spent some money. He spent three dimes, three nickels, four pennies on a balloon. How much money does he have left? All right, so he had a hundred cents, so that's like a dollar. He spent some money, and then the question is, how much does he have left? Well, let's first figure out how much money he spent. It says he spent three dimes. He spent three nickels. And he spent four four pennies. So we need to first figure out, well, how much money is that? Well, we know that this is 30 cents, and we know two more nickels makes 40 cents. We don't have enough to make 50 cents, so that's 10, 20, 30, 40, and then 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. So he spent 49 cents. So we have 100 cents that he started with. He spent 49 cents, and we want to know how much money does he have left. Um, a tape diagram, if we were to use a tape diagram to help us understand this problem, would look like this. So there's our 100 cents. Here's our 49 cents. And we want to know how much is left. So there's your tape diagram. That's what the tape diagram would look like. I think at this point, I love the arrow method because it just is so fun and it's so similar to the way we made change back in the olden days. So I'm going to add one penny. That gives me 50 cents. Then I'm going to add another 50 cents and that gets me to a dollar. So what did we add all together? We added 51 cents. And so the missing value is 51 cents. Now, of course, we could have used the standard algorithm, um, but I think in this case, probably the arrow method, quicker, easier, something that students can do in their head. They don't actually have to write it out this way. Um, so there you go. So the puzzle that Casey wants costs a buck, and she has six nickels, one dime, and 11 pennies. And the question is, how much more money does she need to buy the puzzle? This is a classic idea of the where keywords, how much more money. Oh, normally when we say more, that means you're going to add, right? Well, in this case, we don't necessarily have to add to get the answer. In fact, we're, we could use subtraction. So using keywords, we want to be more thoughtful than just telling our students to blindly look for... Um, keywords and that tells you what to do. So let's first figure out how much money Casey has. So she has six nickels. So that's going to be six nickels. Nickel, 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 nickel. So that's five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. She has one dime, so that's forty, plus 11 pennies. So if she has 11 pennies, so this right here is 40 cents plus 11 more pennies, that's going to be 51 cents. So that means Casey currently has 51 cents and she wants to save a dollar. And so we're going to say, well, 
51 plus what gives us a dollar, meaning a hundred cents. And that answer, of course, is 49 cents, parents and teachers. And the idea is, how could we get there? Well, let's do, let's do the subtraction with a standard algorithm, just to be different. All right? And so the, we're going to take that hundred and exchange it for ten tens. Then we're going to take one of those tens, leaving us with nine tens, and cash it in for ten ones. So now we have ten ones, take away one one, is nine ones. Nine tens, take away five tens, gives us four tens. And so our answer is 49 cents. And I, I use the standard algorithm. Another easy method would be the um, arrow method that would work. Kelly has 38 fewer cents than Molly. So I'm going to draw a picture because this is important. So we have two characters. We have Kelly and we have Molly. All right. So first it says Kelly has 38 fewer cents than Molly. Molly has a dollar. How much does Kelly have, all right? So what I like to do is I like to first draw both characters in the story with the exact same number line. And then I'm going to go back, or a uh, tape diagram. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to read the question now. It says, Kelly has 38 fewer cents than Molly. So what that means is that means I need to make Kelly's tape diagram shorter. So I'm going to erase some of her tape diagram. And it doesn't matter exactly how much I erase right here. I'm just going to stop at some arbitrary amount. And I'm going to say uh, that that portion that I erased, so this part that I erased is the 38 fewer cents. So this part that I erased is the 38 cents. Now we need to remember that Molly has a hundred cents. So the question is, how much does Kelly have? So that's this part right here. So what we need to understand is this 38 cents plus the missing value is going to equal 100. So really, we could think of this as 38 plus what gives us 100. And so it's interesting that we are thinking of it as addition even though the word fewer was in the sentence. So that's another real important thing that why we can't just blindly use key words to tell us what we're supposed to do. And so 38, I'm going to add 2, and that's going to give us, bump us up to 40. And then I'm going to add 60, and that's going to give us 100. So what did we add all together? Well, we added 62 cents all together. So that is how much Kelly has. She has 62 cents. This one is really, I'm not going to solve the problem, but I am going to draw the problem using tape diagrams because I think parents and teachers, we need extra support learning how to use the tape diagrams to scaffold the thinking for our students. So it says Mario has 41 more cents than Ryan. Mario has a buck. How much money does Ryan have? All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think, oh, we have two characters. We have Mario and we have Ryan. And I'm going to start by drawing both of their type diagrams being identical. I generally, when I have two characters, I always start with their tape diagrams being identical. Then I go back and I read the question to make sure um, to, to then tweak the uh, tape diagrams. I don't try and draw the tape diagrams perfectly the first time.
So let's go back and read the question. It says, Mario has 41 more cents than Ryan. So whose tape diagram needs to be longer? Well, Mario's has 41 more cents than Ryan. So that means Ryan's, um, well, I could if I wanted to. I could, eh, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to erase a little bit from Ryan because Ryan, his tape diagram is supposed to be a little bit shorter and we don't know exactly how much shorter. So it, 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 I'm just going to erase an arbitrary amount right there. There's my arbitrary amount. And then I'm going to put in, boom, there's Ryan. Now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to read. So now that I know that Mario's tape is supposed to be longer than Ryan's tape, I'm going to go back and I'm going to read the question again. And it says Mario has 41 more cents than Ryan. So that means this piece right here is, oops, is 41 cents. All right? So that piece, so right here, indicates where they're equal. And then this piece is the 41 more cents that Ryan has. Now, we're also told that Mario has a dollar. So I'm going to put 100 cents. He has 100 cents. But we know that this portion is 41 cents. Now the question is, how much money does Ryan have right here? So there's our question mark. Well, that is the same amount as this piece right here. So we know we need to do 100 take away 41. Interesting that it says Mario has 41 more cents, and yet my solution involves subtraction. Of course, we could do 41 plus what equals 100. That's another way we could do it. And parents and teachers, I'm going to leave it up to you guys to actually solve this problem. And that wraps up second grade module 7 lesson 12, using tape diagrams to help us understand those word problems and then subtract or add, actually, huh?